Hi there, welcome to another episode of 411 Pop Culture. This is your host, Justin Steele. We are going to be talking about Miss Saigon, Les Mis, Bubble and Schoenberg, and all these musical adaptations. Today with me is my good friend Meg. She's coming back for another episode. How you doing, Meg? Hi, I'm well. Good, good, good. Yeah, so we just, uh, you know, Meg and I bonded over musicals, and in particular, Les Mis was, you know, our first, I think, we were working at Chi Chi's at the time in Bowling Green, Ohio, and... <laughs> One of us was running around singing on my own you. from Les Mis, and then yeah, and then Meg, you kind of perked up, and you're like, I said, I've seen that. And I was like, I've seen it. You know, a friendship was born, and that's what a lot of you know music. I think that's what's great about music. I mean, so many aspects of pop culture people can relate to, but musicals in general, especially the the heart, the soul that goes into them. So we decided as. New productions have been coming out this past year, tours of Les Mis and Miss Saigon, that we would go ahead and do some reviews and discussions about it. Hope Meg saw Les Mis, and I didn't get a chance to catch it this round. We both saw Miss Saigon, but you saw Les Mis this yes. past year. So what did you think of the production overall? Oh, it was great. Yeah. I really loved it. I mean, it's my favorite musical, so I'm a little biased, but... For sure. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, no, Les Mis is definitely one of... I think it's definitely one of the most universally loved musicals. Jekyll and Hyde here is my personal favorite, mm -hmm. um, and then Les Mis. That's another one that's and universally... And then Miss Saigon. Oh, yeah, that's a, good one. that's a good one. I feel like when I go to see shows, though, especially ones that I love... A lot of what I look at in terms of, you know, act, you know the, the, the look of it and the stage and all that, but as far as, I always notice with Les Mis, the guys versus the girls. It seems like when I go, there's always one group, and I'm spoiled from broad, or original Broadway cast albums, London cast albums, Dreamcast, so you have <laughs> certain things that you love. But with live versions, do you think, did both the men, like Javert, Valjean, Marius, do they do as well or better or worse than Eponine, Fantine, mm. and um, Cosette? You know, did they all, was it a good blend or would you say the girls were better than the guys? Interesting. Um, I always love the girl songs better mm. because I'm a girl. For sure. <laughs> so I always think the girls are better. I will say, just because I've watched the movie so much, because it's what's available, yeah. it was just nice to see, like... Back to a stage performance. Yes, to see the stage performance, to see, like, better casting choices. I know what you mean. Stars, Javert's song, Stars. I love that song. Yeah. I love well, that song Well, that's always so my much. audition song. Anytime I do an audition, it's Stars. So I'm very picky about it. Such a good song. Yeah. And just to see it performed live by... A, a natural vocalist. singer. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't think I didn't think that Russell Crowe did a horrible job. I, I feel like it was just his intonation, his way of doing it. But I do like Javert's voice to have a smooth, velvety feel yes. to it, and not so much a like alternative rock, rough sort of thing. I agree. Um, but so stars though this stars one was, was good. so be uh, yes, that's all I wanted. Yeah. That's really yeah. what I wanted most was like to hear like just to be fulfilled by a good rendition of stars and it was well i thought you know i actually really did like anne hathaway's performance um i i think she bled all over the you know the screen but i also did miss the sort of belting of fontaine and you know i feel like that gets lost in translation or even you know samantha barks was fantastic as eponine however because she chose to do the more introverted in your face camera live thing i think you know i've heard her sing it before and she definitely is a belter and I, what I miss being in a live show like these are hearing the big belts because like it's that like chills yes. and all that and so do they do they you know everybody's back oh, to normal yes ev uh, yes yes fun too um I dreamed a dream I mean yes and Anne Hathaway's version is just heartbreaking correct and yeah beautiful but that's the movie you can't do it's that on a stage. Thing, yeah. so yes I love seeing it on stage and it's it's less sad because of the way they rearranged it for the movie. Sure, yeah. And it's it's beautiful. The I'm mainly mad yeah. that I missed it. <laughs> I just I it was I had to choose between Miss Saigon and Les Mis this time. I had stuff come up, but um and uh, you know Miss Saigon Les Mis is always going to be coming through, but Miss Saigon is less is no, more than yeah, that was the first time I'd ever seen Miss Saigon for sure. I and then talking a little bit about. You're, you're going to see Les Mis. They used to have the sort of revolving stage, and then they switched that out. They still had that out then? 
the right that did not have the revolving stage it was more scenery more set design would you say that that like affected it or was it still just as fine i mean i don't think you missed anything like i don't think it took away from anything like because i do like those kind of effects like with the revolving stage i don't think a show if it's as good as something like les mis or miss saigon that it's reliant upon necessarily the the, the set and then this was your first time seeing miss saigon so what were some of your overall impressions because we listened to it i think i played the original london cast right we listened to it in its entirety on a road trip once that's right and this was my first time seeing it live the first time we listened to it, I was very moved. I cried. It was in I remember you did cry. You did. <laughs> so different seeing it live. I just took away so much more. I mean, the evacuation scene was... Every time. Em- so emotional. So, like, oh. I think I bought an additional cast album because of that scene. I, I remember I had the London cast, the Highlights cast, and then I was at uh, Borders back in the day, and you could listen to, like, snippets Right, I know I miss boredom. Me too. I miss it. I miss it. I love the convenience of everything now, ordering online, etc. But like it was nice to go to the yeah, the setting of it. A store. Right, because it really was like a Starbucks slash music store oh, combo, yeah. but bigger. But anyway, I remember listening on the headphones, and I heard that scene come up again, and I'm like, I need to have it again. I need to have it again. The I feel like her name is Joanna, it's April something, or Joanna April or Joanna Going, something like that. But she was the Kim and she was fine, but, you know, for me, Leia Salonga is always going to be Kim, just like she's always going to be one of my favorite Eponines. I, I divide up my Eponines, you know, it's it's one or the other, but I do think that that scene is just full of emotion and overwhelming. And yes, the storyline with uh, with losing the child, mm-hmm. I think, I swear I give my life for you, is one of the most heartbreaking songs in the it show. It is. I mean, it's so true. I mean, yeah. just when, when you're a mom and you have kids and you hear that song, you're like, yes. You, you understand how she feels. What were some of your other favorite songs from the show? Like, there's, like, I, I think Last Night of the World's a great That's song. That's what I was going to say, actually. But uh, Sun and Moon is my favorite of the two love ballads, yeah. though. Like, I love Last Night of the World. It's got that big power ending. But uh, Sun and Moon, there's just a sweet, delicate quality about it that I always kind of fall in love with. Last Night of the World is my yeah, favorite. Nice. I love it. Yeah, nice. And then that bum, 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 bum. Uh, which also then gets reprised at the end of I Still Believe, which is my favorite song, I think, from the entire musical. I, I love the dynamic of Ellen. I love the dynamic of Kim. And to have these two sort of personalities come together in that song. I love a female duet. No, always, always. Jekyll Hyde, In His Eyes, Miss Saigon. Wicked. I Still Believe. Cass, I don't know, or... Mm. Um, I know him so well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's so many going. Those are always that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sorry, you know, as well as the guys sing, and they'll give me the chills too. Something about the female voice when they do a good belt and then it's harmonized and it's belted. I'm like in the seat, like, ooh, that's so good. I think Wicked is my favorite example of that. And then in prepping for this, I did look up to see a few things about the new Les Mis production because I didn't get to see it. And one reviewer said that any show of Les Mis is always going to either be made or broken on the performance of Eponine. And I have to say, I agree with that. I think Eponine totally. is one of the, yes, it's the story of Jean Valjean and his influence is everything. But, you know, I came into it as a teenager. I think most young adults, especially girls, come into it at teenage years. And Eponine is the character we all relate to, that unrequi- unrequited love, etc. But uh, I'd say some of my favorite all-time Eponines would be, um, if I want the sort of angry, bitter uh, Eponine, I love Lea Salonga. If I want the sort of whiny, poppy version, I'll go with Frances Ruffell. She was the original London and Broadway cast. If I want the heartbroken, desolate Eponine, it's definitely Kao Shimada from the uh, a Complete Symphonic Recording. And she sang that phonetically. You know, she didn't know a single word that she was singing because she just applied what she knew singing it in Japanese. But which of those you pointed during <laughs> Kao uh, Shimada? Kao Shimada's my yeah, favorite. Yeah. Her voice is just I, heartbreaking. It's so beautiful. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And I feel like when when I hear that song, like that's that's how I feel. That conveys the emotion that it's I like think. It's like an empty loneliness. You feel the loneliness she has. Like mm-hmm. I think the character of Eponine, I think Samantha, Samantha Burks did a really good job in the film, and I think she did take more of a, she said she went more for the, the literary uh, interpretation, which she got from reading the books, com- and she kind of fused it with the show. 
Uh, but I do think Lea Salonga is the closest to what Eponine's supposed to be. Kind of bitter, kind of like in your face. For sure. Uh, she's got that Disney melodic voice, so it's always going to be beautiful. But yes, Kao Shimada, I feel like she you, she finds that internal part of Eponine that's just this lonely girl that's sad underneath, and that's why she's bitter. But you're hearing in her on my own the sadness. I agree. Yeah. She, I think, Eponine feels like she has to have this tough exterior. I mean, she's had a pretty rough Correct. life. She's, I mean, you see who her parents are. And I'd say in some ways even more bitter because she had a really good life at the first. You know, as a child, she was kind of spoiled. And I think sometimes that's harder to deal with when you lose it all. Yeah. If you don't know what you have, you, you, you can <laughs> be jealous and resent. But if you have it really good and then it's really taken away, I think you become bitter, you know, more so than just never knowing what you have but anyway and well yeah i think and then on my own i mean it, the clue is in the name she's alone and when you're alone you can be more vulnerable and you can kind of show your heartbreak more than you can when you're around everyone so i like the heartbreak version and that's why i was really disappointed i want to talk about the film adaptations later but happening in this musical it's like i think that they, they said booble and schoenberg said that they never felt they quite got on my own uh, correct. I, I feel like they felt like they didn't do it right. I think that I, I think they don't sometimes realize the genius that they have. Sometimes maybe because the words don't come out necessarily making complete sense. There's a sort of poet poeticness to it, a poetry that emphasizes something that yes, because you found Booble and Schoberg, you found your way into the head of a 17 year old girl, <laughs> and I think maybe it confused you. But like in the film where they kind of edit down her on my own, they edit down her little fall of rain. And I guess, I don't think they had a choice with that. I do think it was the director. However, they always said they had a problem with that song. I'm like, but you, you, you shouldn't because you had it right. And it's like, yeah. why are you changing this? But I mean, I can see that. It's such a, it's a, it's like a different side to Eponine all yeah. of a sudden in the movie. And I can see how they might not think it would fit perfectly with like who she is who she's presented mm -hmm. as but no you're right that is that is how a teenage girl would react that's that the is character what she would you say. know cosette is kind of the girl that ends up having it all now yes you feel bad for her when she's a child but when she's a, an adult she's just kind of like she's wealthy uh the boy is clearly in love with her marius most girls won't relate to that you know, we all have this sort of when we listen to a musical it's to have a sort of emotional catharsis or feeling and we want to listen to the songs it's like Javert and Stars where you kind of mm -hmm. feel like you have to it's that moment where you're like I believe in something and I have to figure it out and Eponine is the sort of unrequited love that I think most teenage girls can relate to oh, so yeah. you know and why would you sacrifice those moments to like not have that it only makes her more well-rounded, in I my opinion. I think so, I think so. And like you said, Kao Shimada, it is a different interpretation of these different interpretations mm -hmm. where it is because she doesn't, she is singing phonetically and not in English, like her first language, that there is a certain uh, ethereal quality to it that almost makes it seem like a, like a religious experience, what she's feeling, as mm -hmm. opposed to like uh, Lea Salonga, who's taking on the idea of like, I'm bitter and course this is happening and I'm on my own again right hers is like praying almost it I almost like, comes out like praying I like that you can tell that English is not her first language yeah like yeah, when yeah. she I don't say she mispronounces things she emphasizes but, yeah, the uh, right or she puts the wrong emphasis <laughs> on the wrong syllable <laughs> yes. essentially yes. Mike Myers view from the top I definitely stole that oh, but yes you know that. but that is true if she does I the first like time the I heard it, it I was like what did she say but yeah, I, I, feel, I, I forget what the line is, but oh, it's I've only been pretending. The first time I heard her say it, it was kind of like a bulletin pretending. <laughs> and I'm like a bulletin pretending. But then when you hear it now, I'm like, I love that part now. Like that's actually one of my favorite parts of her version. But yeah, but the Eponines though, I think they're the, one of the main reason to watch the show. And I agree with this viewer. I'm like, there's a lot of reasons I love it. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like my top most reason is what is this Eponine doing? And speaking with song changes and adaptations, <laughs> especially when it comes to Booble and Schoenberg, I want to talk about the problem with Ellen <laughs> and Miss Saigon and how she has gone through so many changes over and over again from the beginning. You know, I, I saw on the making of Miss Saigon video back in the day that there was even an earlier version of her 11th hour song, her, her lament. 
and it started off with like who says i'm hurt then it transitioned into her or me and then it became now that i've seen her and yet again it has changed to maybe and even though i think my personal favorite of all of them was always her or me it was the first one i heard and the first one that kind of stuck with me but now that I, but they always kept at least the same melody the same song mm -hmm. they just changed the lyrics and now they've added in Maybe, which in and of itself is a very pretty song that absolutely 100% does not belong <laughs> to Ellen in Miss Saigon. So a little backstory, you know, Ellen, I think it's similar to Eponine in Miss Saigon where they felt that they never quite got it right. And I think it comes down to just them being men versus women, not realizing they did create something right. They did create something perfectly and they keep fiddling around with it or trying to like, make it a little different but the character of ellen she comes into the musical in the second act i mean at the beginning of the first but like she's a second act character and the entire time they have set up this love story between kim and chris so nobody is going to come in and be rooting for ellen <laughs> so what makes ellen an interesting character is that i love ellen because i don't love ellen I love Ellen because I haven't been set up, but she has always, until now, acted like a normal human being. You know, she she found out she was Miss... I, I don't know if Chris outright lied to her, per se, but he definitely omitted details. And she, she finds this out from the girl that he was once in love with, thinking that she's just some fling. And then this girl is now shouting in her face, take my child, I'm bitter, you know. And then Ellen segues into you know what i consider to be the normal reaction which is originally which is what just happened i've just made things worse and i don't know why but wait a minute i was lied to i love this man but i'm kind of pissed right now and now i want to uh i'm going to be yelling at him when he comes in the room and it's changed to maybe which is <clears throat> this girl just came in and started screaming at me i feel bad and maybe they belong together <laughs> maybe i'm wrong to be here right now did he love me oh i don't know what to do and then i noticed it still did have somewhat of the confrontation before which is the following song with chris and ellen and she's almost getting mad again and it seems like the original way it was set up um, kim and ellen have a confrontation ellen sings about whoa this is messed up but i'm kind of pissed and then chris comes in and I'm pissed I'm going to take it out on you right now and yell at you, which I feel is the normal reaction. But now it's Kim comes in and she's pissed. And then Ellen sings her song about like, but maybe they belong together and I, I should just stand out of the way. And then Chris comes in and she's like, you lied to me and I don't understand. It's just not a natural arc. And Booble and Schoenberg, I feel like they had it right. And it's like, why did you have to change it? Stop, like they said, they always felt she was too too unlikable or too, you know, you didn't have a lot of empathy for her. But personally, I had empathy for her because I didn't. Because she was a normal human being. She had a normal reaction. And in a musical like Miss Saigon, which is very much more about realism, it's about something that really happened. It's about a contemporary spin. That is how a, a woman, I feel like, would react. So... I just kind of played for you uh who says i'm hurt her me now that i've seen her of those three you know which one did you sort of respond to well i think you nailed it <laughs> <laughs> i've been thinking about this for a long time especially if they're going to do a movie go back to at least now that i've seen her i think her or me would be the better choice but go back to now that i've seen her not maybe but yeah go on <laughs> no i yes i agree that her or me is I agree. Ellen is not a likable character. She's not written to be a likable character. You're not supposed to like her. I don't think there needs to be any changes made for you to feel empathy for her. Like Correct. You, like you said, I love her because I don't love her. Because what she's giving us is real human emotions, like an, a real reaction yeah. to this. This would be your reaction. And obviously, like, probably a lot of emotions are running through her. So it's understandable that they, as men writers, probably wouldn't know like exactly where to land or like which road to take. Sure. But I think it's it's expected that she would be angry. Yeah. And and she's already, she's in a foreign place. She, you know, it's already a stressful situation. Right. She's so out of her element. Yeah. Her whole entire life has been 
misguided. Yes. She oh, has God. this misperception. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Her whole life has been turned around all of a sudden. She's not really sure what's going to happen. Yeah. And, yeah, I don't think they need... I don't think there needs to be, like, a campaign to, like, push us to like Ellen. Correct. And it's part of the tragedy, too, of the whole musical, because it is a tragedy. Right. That Tam does end up with Ellen, in, you know, in the long run. And it's like, what, you know, if they if they want to make her more likable, then just add a line. You don't need to change an entire scene or song. Just add in a line, Ellen is a teacher. Or <laughs> something right. like that, you yeah, know, to, like, be like, her. Sh- correct. But, like, the song, now that I've seen her... More specifically, the song Her or Me, which I understand the title of it could be, you might think misleadingly like it's going to be this fight song. But we we said when we watched it that it's more like, oh, wait, this just came down to Her or Me. She's actually, I had no idea Chris felt this way right. for her. It's, We're set up now. Like, it's mm-hmm. not like she's like, it's Her or Me. It's and more that's introspective. It. Like, she's realizing it for the first time. Like, this, this is going to be Her or Me. She's not yeah. telling him... It's her and me. Give credit to your audience. Give credit that we're not going <laughs> right. to look at Ellen. I want to know what, like, section or group of people they talked to that they were like, <laughs> well, you know, you know how they do in, like, movies or something? They have, like, uh, test audiences yes. or something. Like, what test audience told you, oh, well, <laughs> Ellen's a little unrelatable? And you weren't like, well, yeah, she is supposed to be unrelatable. You know, she, it, it's, it is a tragedy because of that. You know, it's not it's not her fault, but you're going to always come away no matter what you do. And in fact, in some ways, I felt more betrayed by the ending when they had their confrontation. You have El- uh, Ellen a moment ago singing about maybe they belong together, maybe, I don't know what happened. But then by the end of her and Chris's discussion, they end up being like, we have to tell Kim, we're, we're not going to take Tam, we're going to support her here. You almost seem like it's kind of more of a jerk because she's being disgenuine because a moment ago she was kind of fine giving Kim to or giving Chris to Kim and now it's kind of like whoa 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 wait a minute I thought you were fine now you're not and that's the kind of parent you're going to be that's right. the kind of you know sort of setup you're going to have it makes her seem disgenuine and before I'm like yes. she might not be likable but I believed her I believe she was a real person a true person now I'm thinking she's trying to be this sort of 50s housewife toward, sort of mentality and it doesn't make sense to me. I agree. It's disjointed. And yeah. that's not, yeah. that's not like an initial reaction that a woman would have. I don't think like, so. Yeah. I mean, I, I can so. understand like if she had like days or weeks to think about this, like, oh, maybe yeah. they belong together. You would come across every possible solution. But like in the moment, reacting to it immediately, that's not relatable. It's just not. It's, it's, it's absolutely disingenuous, not. you're right. Yeah. And especially because songs like this are supposed to be sort of et- internal laments that are being sang to the audience. I, we're supposed to have her real thoughts. Right. And I, I think any real person would have a, oh my God, what just happened? Wait, now I'm a little upset. I was lied to. I love this man and that makes me even a little bit more upset. But now it, maybe it was better when he lied to me. I don't know. She's like conflicted and she's having all these emotions. I will say that, you know, I get the title change from her or me to now that I've seen her. But even still, when they went to now that I've seen her, I feel like they kind of messed up because in it, they kind of changed the line in her or me. It was, I won't wait. I swear I'll fight to, and now that I've seen her, it became, I don't care. I swear I'll fight. And I'm like, well, now that sounds a little bit. You were trying to make it seem less confrontational, but that seems a little bit more confrontational. So stop messing with your songs. And I, you have it right. Sorry. You did a genius, a genius thing. What were you gonna say? No. It was pretty... Oh, um, I just don't like the use of the line. I don't care. Like, yeah, exactly. You do. You do, you you do, do care, care very much. Yeah. Which is why I think it was good they changed "Who Says I'm Hurt" because I feel like that song made her seem very aloof, like. Who says I'm hurt? Right. Even though you're clearly hurt. Like, who says it? You know, it's fine. Right. And who are you saying that for? Yourself? Correct. Like, you don't you're trying need... to convince yeah. yourself. And it's right. just, it's too muddled. But you got it right with her or me. Please, you know, and we will talk again about film, the their film adaptations and why I love Les Mis, but there were problematic elements with the changes. And I've just, if they're going to do a change with Miss Saigon, I hope that they go back to the original songs because or at least her or me or now that i've seen her because maybe just does not belong it is it doesn't fit it's unnatural and it's jarring to the rest of the story because now you don't trust ellen you may not have liked her before but now you don't trust you never had a reason to not trust her and she gave you one exactly also why are we mad at ellen and not chris 
Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And with Ellen before, Meg, excellent. Because with <laughs> Ellen before, you could kind of, you Chris did get kind of to take some heat from Ellen. And now it's kind of like, he's off the hook, he's innocent. No, Chris is not off the hook. He is not innocent. Right. Right. Why would we not like Ellen? It's Chris that right. we're kind of... And I don't misunderstand. There's a lot of... He went through a horrible situation with the whole Vietnam War in general. But there's still some accountability that needs to be taken. And he is just kind of like... I guess he does kind of come out to be that, that great of a character. <laughs> but at least with Ellen before he was getting yelled at. But yeah, now it is kind of like... Oh, he's the hero that's not a hero, you know? And... Uh, but yes, I just like to. I just really wanted to take some sort of platform to to, to vent this feeling I've had about this since I've heard oh, the change in me. Because I've heard over the years just Bubble and Schoenberg talk about it, and they've always I've always noticed they've like been eyeing that song, and I'm like, you had it right, you had it so right, and it is comes back circling back to what we said about Eponine and Les Mis. You have this song. Maybe the problem is it's just a male versus female thing where the, these men created the song and they didn't realize they had it perfect in its imperfection and now they're overthinking it. But you did capture a way a woman thinks. So now listen to the women, you know, that are saying this. Because I've looked online and there are a lot of women that are, are like, no, I related to, now that I've seen her, I related to her or me. And maybe is a pretty song. But it does not belong to Ellen, and it does not belong to Miss Saigon. So, agree. Thanks for watching, everybody. There's more to come, but I wanted to do a little section just talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one thing that comes up, I've noticed in a debate with musicals in general, and speaking of Ellen, you know, with the now that I've seen her, maybe thing. I feel like maybe also is now a song that is more specific to the situation in Miss Saigon. I think it can be applied. You can listen to it outside of the context. But I've just, for our musical show tune fans out there, do you think a song should be able to stand alone? Or do you think that it, when you're doing a musical for writers, showrunners, all this stuff, do you think that the song should stand alone? Or do you think they need to be necessarily a part of the musical itself? I mean, I think there should be both. But, sure. no, I definitely think that you should be able to hear a song on its own and be able to connect to it outside of the show. I agree completely, um, yeah. I think it should be enhanced when you hear the whole thing together, like, as yeah, a Yeah, 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 definitely. It should definitely fit the moment and right. stuff, yeah. Well, I think of Jekyll and Hyde. You know, that's my favorite musical is Jekyll and Hyde, and it's written by Frank Wildhorn. And he's he's written for a lot of pop, pop artists, country artists, Trish Wood, Whitney Houston. And a lot of the songs in Jekyll and Hyde are songs that you can hear anywhere. You know, Someone mm. Like You, This Is The Moment. They're not necessarily... Eyes, yes, yes. A New Life. Song. You could hear them and listen to them at any time and apply them in any situation, but they fit perfectly in the musical. Or we, what made me think we were talking earlier about Jesus Christ Superstar mm -hmm. and I Don't Know How to Love Him. That's a song that very much, it's a song. You would hear a pop song on the radio. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be you've seen Jesus Christ Superstar to know what it's talking about. But yeah, I feel like there is a sort of, there's a group out there that think, you know, oh, for a musical to be truly, you know, good, it has to, all the music has to automatically just fit in this and shouldn't. Be able to i'm trying to think of some examples off the top of my head um well i'll say something while you're thinking of that yeah <laughs> um i disagree i think that you can hear a song outside of seeing the show um just on its own and connect to it and that would you know maybe get you to listen to the rest of the soundtrack Absolutely. or see the show Absolutely. and that can open you up to something new and if you d if you needed context to hear the song and there's no way to relate to it outside of the whole soundtrack or the whole show, then I, I don't think that's effective. Yeah, I think it comes down to like a sort of snobbish sort of ideal, uh, you know, well, you know, musical theater generally, general is considered like a higher prestigious thing to do. <laughs> and I think some people are like, well, you know, it's just a run of the mill pop song. You know, this isn't a real artist, you know, like a show like I, the, all that's coming up to my mind is fan of the opera, which also does have songs I feel like that are applicable outside or not. But, you know, even have the song Phantom of the Opera. It's very clearly talking about this, but I do think it was even popular on the radio. But, you know, it's not going to really, you, you, you listen to a song like that, it's very specific I mean, yeah, to that musical. You know, you know what you're listening to. Correct. Um, I have a funny story about that. Okay. I have a Spotify playlist of, like, 
it's like 200 songs it's all broadway songs nice. and um springtime for hitler from the producers came on and paul out of context my husband paul was like Hi, paul. what is this <laughs> <laughs> and those are always the but best that song songs is too. hilarious yeah. you can hear it out of context even knowing that it belongs even, to something yes, yeah you might think what in the world but you a absolutely right. mm -hmm. like, so i've heard this come up before i've seen it on reddit or these kind of sites where it's kind of like oh a real show has this and i've always that's what got me into liking musicals where when i would hear a song that was applicable to any situation and not just that i love that it came from a certain show and i like listening to it like sometimes i'm hearing like when i hear something from jacqueline and hyde i like thinking of the doctor or lucy in that moment but sometimes mm -hmm. i want to hear that song and apply it to my own life and...